Welcome in everyone to HBD Sports. We've got a special show for you guys today. As always, it's money, it's Clyde. We're ready to rock out and talk some wrestling. You ready, buddy? Yes, sir. Ready to go. Lots going on today. It's it's a Monday today, and I hate Mondays. I just hate Mondays. It's like Sunday night is always like one of the best nights of my life, you know? And then, then on Monday, I always wake up and I'm like, oh, Monday. <laughs> You know, that was like, like I feel like Seinfeld, like Newman, you know, you know what I mean? That's, a, that's how I face my Mondays. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get ready for those Mondays, man. Especially on a non-pay-per-view Sunday night, too, you know, like, there's, there's really not a lot of momentum carrying me into Monday at this point, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just a lot of, a lot of rumors going so, around. So, if, if you guys didn't hear our podcast yesterday, before we get into these stories, and we've got some good ones today, we've got a lot of news to go over, a lot of topics to cover. But uh, our man Clyde here, he's agreed to take a guitar shot at a thousand subscribers. We got to keep pumping this out there. Spread the word, like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Because um, if we can, maybe I don't know, like we get enough beers in the guy, we might be able to convince him to take a elect- an elect- electric guitar shot. <laughs> so we can really up the ante uh, a little bit here. That sounds like a trip to the emergency room. <laughs> So let, let's go ahead and hop into these stories. Did you, did you see some that, that a few more details came out about the Arn Anderson release from uh, WWE? No, uh, I'm, I know there was a heated argument. I'm not sure what the argument was over, though. It, evidently, there's been some heat for a while between uh, Vince and the Enforcer. And um, evidently, did, did you know? I didn't know this. I'm, I'm just kind of browsing through the article here. Is Arn Anderson, he was uh, John Cena's agent? Is that correct? That's uh, news to me, man. And if he is, that's talking about a good gig there, huh? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, definitely, dude, definitely. So so there's been some heat for a while, evidently, with Vince and Anderson, and uh, that led to the release. And I'm almost wondering if, if that, like, perfectly coincided with the Bruce Pritchard hiring, didn't it? Yeah, I, th- I think Bruce starts today, maybe, you know. I, I did see where he's coming in. He, he could actually be taking Arn's spot. So did you get a chance to uh, check out any of the, the house show results from, from the weekend? No, no, I didn't see any of that. Um, th- they had a show in uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas, where the main event was Braun Strowman defeated uh, Baron Corbin. Natalia defeated Alexa Bliss. Drew McIntyre defeated Dean Ambrose, and in a match where Ambrose was evidently injured, did you hear about that? Uh, yeah, I did hear something about that. Is that is that being confirmed by WWE? Now I haven't seen anything from WWE, but there is there is a uh, you know news all across the web web about this, and uh, it also says that Drew McIntyre was injured as a part of the live event, but it appears that he wasn't the only superstar who was injured. I'm reading here, it says McIntyre was actually injured in his match with Dean Ambrose on Saturday night, according to the Wrestling Observer. Huh. And then um, I was finding articles last night that was saying Ambrose was injured. Lord, I guess so. We'll have to look more into that, man, WWE. Yeah, Gnome Dar is evidently... Gnome Dar is injured as well, uh, struggling with a knee injury, and Mark Andrews was knocked out in his match with Dar (laughs) over the weekend. Good Lord. Guys are getting stiff, ain't they? <laughs> Man, it's like a whole roster full of nasty boys. Yeah. Speaking of, everywhere. Speaking of stiff, uh, who who do you think like was some of? The, I mean, I guess we can parlay from stiff to tough, but who's some of the like? Let, let's go over like. In my opinion, Ming, Rick Rude, and Scott Steiner are the three toughest dudes that ever step in the wrestling ring. Am, am I, I could be wrong. I don't know, and that's why I want to hear your take on this. Who 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 do you think the three? toughest wrestlers of all time are are we talking about like shoot fighting i guess maybe like let's say you're in a dark alley and there's 10 dudes approaching you and you can have one wrestler by your side you know like <laughs> yeah man I, I guess i would probably maybe go with brock lesnar you, you take lesnar yeah I, I think i'd go with brock man and you know not to discredit any of those gentlemen uh you mentioned those are, those are all notoriously tough guys Part part of the reason why I say Steiner, that guy, he just he just seems so like agitated all the time. Like I don't even know. Like let's say Steiner was coming to the local flea market to sign autographs. Like I don't know, you know how excited I'd be to get in that line. <laughs> you know. What I mean? like, well, well, don't 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 talk too bad about him. 
We're, we're sorry, Mr. Stafford. That's right. That's right. No, no, we wasn't talking bad. I, I don't think. No, in, no, no. Admitting intimidation is not bad. I don't think. It's, yeah, it's, no, no. You're a great wrestler, man. One of my favorites from my childhood. That's right. Frankensteiner is the best move ever. It's the fucking Frankensteiner, not the other thing, man. What they call I, it. I wouldn't call it by any other name. No, exactly. So, so, so there's more to get to here. What, what? What do you think the Bruce, Bruce Pritchard signing like? What do you think it means for for WWE? Do you think it, like are they taking a different direction here, or what? You know, what do you think like for the big picture? What do you think this means? Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not I'm not really sure, man. But uh, it, it'll be interesting. Bruce uh, had a lot of great great ideas, so you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Like I was saying on our last podcast, I didn't become a fan of him until I listened to. His podcast, you know. I know he's got a wealth of knowledge and some great ideas, so it'll be interesting, man. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens going forward. So, do the, the NXT call-ups, those are permanent call-ups? I think so. I, I did see a video of uh, Alex Alistair Black uh, at an NXT event basically saying goodbye, so... I, I guess we should, you know, pencil him in. I'm not sure about the other three, but uh, I've seen where Aleister Black said goodbye to the NXT uh, crowd, basically. And um, yeah, there's still, to, to me, there's still like a certain percentage of the wrestling fans who think that this isn't like a war getting ready to start between AEW and WWE. And evidently, like, I don't know if like history is just too far in the past now for people to remember what happened. But like you've said, McMahon is definitely paying attention. He's scrambling to make sure everything is as good as it can be on his end. AEW's building momentum. We all know that. And there still seems to be like a percentage of fans. I was sending out some tweets yesterday and somebody was getting back to me like, well, there's not really an ongoing war. W- what do you mean war? Like WWE has this thing sewn up. There is no war. And I'm like, okay. Like, I, I mean, Vince, that's, that's not the type of move that Vince would usually make with the calling up the four top uh, NXT stars like that, just just bam, you know, just kind of out of nowhere like that. Uh, you, usually, something like that happens like after a shakeup or something. Am I, am I right? Or, or? Uh, I'm with you, man. I agree that there is definitely a wrestling war on the uh, on the cusp here. I mean, Vince McMahon, everything they've been doing here lately, they've been releasing people, they've been giving guys that and gals that have never had. It a shot they've been trying a lot of new things uh, i think raw and smackdown and the pay-per-views uh across the board i've never had a problem with uh nxt i think they put out good uh product every every week but uh raw smackdown and pay-per-views have been a lot lot better recently i totally agree and i think i think part of vince calling up those four um nxt stars was uh you know ricochet and black and gargano and um, was to um, kind of like Johnny Johnny wrestling too. There <laughs> was, was to kind of like because uh, because um, like Kenny Omega and Matt, you know they missed out on Kenny Omega, Nick and Matt Jackson, and and uh, Jericho has clearly moved on at this point. And so I think he kind of did brought call them up to you know to keep keep the show rolling as he likes to say, right? Keep the keep the ball moving. Oh yeah, man! You gotta you gotta inject some new some new life on Raw and SmackDown and. Uh, the four he chose are, you know, you could, I think you could build companies around them guys, man. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of all four of those uh, gentlemen. I want to see some of the ladies of NXT show up on the main roster soon. Yeah, so, something um, something that, in, that um, not NXT, but AEW is going to be doing different than uh, WWE. Did you hear about this? They're actually going to be keeping win and loss records for the wrestlers. Like, they're going to make it, like, where the record is important, like, in any other sport, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I did. I heard it was going to be more sport centric, and uh, I'm all for it, man. I'm, I'm super excited, man. You know, I think about this every day, really. I'm so with we get it rolling. With them adding win and loss records, though, I was wondering, like, is is there a possibility you think, like on like on just your average weekly show, that that the stars on AEW will be wrestling jobbers or you know temporary contracted wrestlers more often? So that way they can kind of pad their records and stuff leading up to these big, their bigger pay-per-views or their bigger events. And their, their wrestlers always have like, you know, nice looking records because the records are evidently, you know, like I said, that's what Khan's talking about is an important aspect of the sport that he doesn't see there right now. So what do you think about that? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that's definitely a possibility. I mean, that could get some, you know, some really good uh, guys and gals out there on the independent scene. It could get them uh, a nice, you know, comfy job there. Well, put me, uh, put me, other guys over. How do you feel about WWE not use it? Well, I don't know, and I, I guess you'd have to get some historian to really check out the numbers. But it seems like when we was younger, like when we was children. The WWE had jobbers on a regular basis on the show to kind of keep their stars over, and like, like, let's say we had a couple stars building up to a big match. Well, they might both wrestle, wrestle jobbers on the show that night, leading up to a match that they was going to have, and kind of like making their stars look stronger. Is, is there less of that in today's wrestling world, or, or do, do I just remember there being more of it than there was back then? There, there's definitely still, uh, you know, jobbers in wrestling, but a lot of times, you know, these these guys are. They kind of look and feel like stars too. They just lose all the time, you know. Like uh, I'm not a big fan of Kurt Hawkins, but the guy, the guy looks, you know, he looks good. He can wrestle, and he didn't look like a jobber, you know. <laughs> well, we all when know he was a young jobber. man. They look like uh, truck drivers, and not to say that's a bad thing, you know. Kind of like a, a farmer, or just just regular guys like me out there in my or getting thrown around, you know. <laughs> But I guess when I said jobbers, I meant more like yeah, and, and yeah, that you're right. They absolutely did look like <laughs> the jobbers did look like they just maybe like randomly drew a ticket from the uh, from the the, the, attend- the attendees that night, and you know, Grandpa from seat seventy one is going to come in there and do a job. Yeah, that's exactly. How, that's how yeah, it did used to look more like that, and so like th- that's what I'm saying. Like it's almost like the jobbers are, are employed full time, like Hawkins, like you said, like he's definitely a jobber, of course. But and he he makes it fun though, at least, but. It just seemed like there was jobbers who, like you said, there was guys you would see on there one week, they would just get their their asses kicked, and then you wouldn't see them on there again. It's almost like they was from the local territory or, or somewhere local. Or, for example, like last year when we went to uh, SmackDown and you was there, um, Kevin Owens had a match against, I believe it was Gary from Louisville. And yeah. <laughs> did you like? Okay, but like that's my that's my example of the jo- how you can use a jobber to make your stars look strong. And like I, I'm pretty sure Gary from Louisville was just a local wrestler from here in Louisville, but he put KO over, made KO look strong on his path to, to doing something bigger down the line with somebody else. You know what I mean? It just seems like that's not used as much. That's kind of like an, a part of the art that's forgotten, and it kind of leads to more fifty fifty booking in the end. Is what I was getting at. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for it, man. It, it, like I'm saying, it would it would give it would give guys and gals uh, a chance that might not, you know, have got it in the past. I would like to see the uh, the enhance, basically the enhancement talent or you know jobbers, whatever you want to call it. I, I would like to see it, you know, peppered in there. Maybe not all the time. Maybe once a night or something. Yeah, de- definitely. I think I just think it, there's a spot for it still, and it's. It just seems anymore like, like at least with the WWE, like they don't really put people over properly when it's time to put somebody over. You know what I mean? And maybe that's just because we was like hyper stimulated in the NWO era when people was really put over when, <laughs> when they needed to be over. You know, maybe the, it'll just never be like that again. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Something just seems yeah. to be missing. Yeah, we're 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 a little older, not to date ourselves, but uh. We might we might be in the minority all wanting to see some of the you know enhancement talent and jobbers. I'm not sure what the right term is. Those are almost some of the terms I've heard over the years. Not to disrespect anybody that might hear this. <laughs> did Did you hear that uh, Matt Hardy had a little bit of a back and forth with some uh, fans on Twitter recently? Uh, no, I know he's gone from WWE though. Yeah, he was just basically saying that he's. Um, that he's more comfortable. Um, that he, that he's more comfortable outside the WWE, and he always has been. Oh yeah, it's, 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 it's got to be a lot of pressure being in the WWE, especially if you're you know a star of his caliber, man. There's probably a lot of spe- expected of you. Well, I, I heard they're like still hot after Jeff, though the one to re-sign him to some kind of bigger contract. That doesn't surprise me. Oh yeah, Jeff. Jeff Hardy. I like Jeff, man, but I've I went cold on him. You know, I'm not into him like I used to be. I was excited when they made their return. What was oh that? yeah, now that, that, was, that was, awesome. was a was that that was a WrestleMania match, right? Yeah, yeah, that was big, man. I, I love. Remember that. the ramp? It took them like four minutes to come down that ramp. I love how they worked the crowd with it. They had New Day come out, 
New Day was in their wrestling gear, so and plus they were the hosts, so it looked like okay, they're gonna put themselves in the match. And beautiful, one of my favorite uh, moments. And uh, my wife, she's a huge Hardy Boys fan, man. I don't know if she's ever been more excited about anything on wrestling. I was excited because they did such a good job of keeping it quiet, at least as far as I've seen. I didn't hear a lot about it leading up to it, you know. Like I heard there was a possibility they could be maybe at some point, you know, that and all this and. But there was nothing substantial leading up to it, you know, to where you knew for sure they're going to be here tonight. Like, you didn't know. You know, I like that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love, that's one of my favorite things about wrestling, you know. You can't get in your TV guide and read about everything that's going to happen on wrestling. So, you know, you, you never know, man. It's a surprise element. <laughs> what, what do you think about the, the, the push that the Revival's been getting lately? Uh, you know, I was a fan of the revival, and I, I seen that they were complaining, and you know, good good for them for speaking up for themselves, and uh, it seems like they have been re- rewarded, and uh, WWE probably wants to keep those guys around because uh, there's already a built-in storyline with them if they were to go to AEW with the Young Bucks. They've been going back and forth for a while now on Twitter. Yeah, well, they put the straps on them, so. I like those guys, man. They're a throwback. Uh, no flips, just fists. They remind me of uh, Tully and Arn Anderson a little bit from back in the day to Brain Busters. That's what you were saying. You think they kind of appeal to an older audience, like in general? Yeah, yeah, I do. I don't, I don't think a lot of the younger generation, they probably look at them as all oh, these guys are playing. When I look at them, I'm seeing solid wrestling, man. Just good old-fashioned wrestling. Just good old-fashioned wrestling, brother. That's right. Like my biscuits and gravy. <laughs> just, a, just an American classic, man. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait for uh, the future. I know that. I'm just very excited about the future. What do you think's going to happen on... Speaking of the future, what's going to happen in about eight hours on Raw tonight, you think? Well, I guess it'll be three or four hours when this hits the web. But. Well, hopefully uh, Roman's going to come out and say that he's that he's healthy and he's ready to go, man, and uh, get back in the mix. Maybe maybe they'll turn the main event into a three-way at WrestleMania, but uh, who knows? Uh, Ric Flair's birthday, I feel like that's going to be crashed somehow by Becky Lynch. It almost, almost has to be, but uh, who knows, man. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to Raw tonight for sure. So, uh, you got anything else? What's going on across the Twitterverse? What's going on on Facebook? You tell us something, brother. What is going on today in the wrestling universe? Uh, by all accounts, man, it's a, it's a lot of news about the uh, Undertaker. I've seen, you know, I don't know what's going on with him. The, what you was telling me about Arn and Vince. I did not know Arn Anderson was uh, seen as an agent. That's a... Uh, pretty interesting there uh, and of course uh, a lot of it's the talk of Raw tonight what's going to happen with Roman and Flair you know kind of kind of stuff we've been covering but uh, really looking forward to tonight's episode man yeah how do you think that the um, like what what do you think that a weekly AEW TV series would look like oh man I think it's going to be I think it's going to be, they're going to focus more on the, the actual in-ring product. I'm sure they'll have storylines. I mean, it is professional wrestling, but uh, I think they're going to look at it a little different. They're going to like, like let's, let's look at what WWE does and let's give, give the audience uh, an alternative, basically. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'll, I'm the kind of guy, I'm going to watch both. You know, I'm pulling for both companies. I don't want to see either one of them fold, you know. Well, Co- Cody was recently quoted um, saying kind of like what he thought it might feel like. And uh, you want to hear that quote? You want to read it to you? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. He said, uh, when I look at Road to Double or Nothing, or I look at BTE, those are the mediums we're heading into Double or Nothing with. And if they're working, then we should continue something in that vein. So if we got the situation you're talking about, Weekly TV, we want to stick with what works and we want to appeal to the fans who have put their trust in us and a lot of fans have to me that's really important so to answer your question i could see these being a big part of aew so i guess he's just saying it's going to have more this is the same feel of the pay-per-views 
Yeah, yeah, man, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I can't can't wait. Wish it was wish it was starting tonight, going head to head with Raw or something. Right, you can't start <laughs> soon enough, brother. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. Ready, ready to go with it. So I'm you, excited, man. You got anything else you want to add today? Any any, any any more news from around the web before I get to uh, to another story I was wanting to get to here? Now I just move move on with you, buddy. Whatever, okay, well, whatever you got to well, after. In preparation, because I think right now we have about like what, like thirty eight subscribers, right? So we'll we'll be at one thousand in no time. So, <laughs> so yeah. in preparation, I looked up like some Jeff Jarrett guitar shots here, and, <laughs> and I'm just wanting to let you know, like I'm I'm watching this compilation here of Jarrett just smashing people with guitars. <laughs> And and the way like Booker T he took it to the face like you probably don't want to do that I just saw Booker T take one to the face and Sid Vicious he took it right over the top of the head I really think the top of the back but I don't know man like it really seems like the best place to take the guitar shot is over the top of the head dude and that's why that's the news I was wanting to break to you today maybe in the in the buttocks or something man because Double J he just he he put some clean smack bam right over I'm just watching time after time again. Double J has folded everybody with these guitars, and so where do you want to take it to? Oh man, I, I think I'm gonna stick with the back. I don't want no no concussions. He, he took one to sting. <laughs> Even Chris Benoit has fell victim to the Double J guitar. Good lord. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want anything to do with that, man. <laughs> Not to the head. Okay, so so I, I just want you to like maybe research a little bit leading up to this and. <laughs> And because, because uh, I mean, we could we can really order like a nice electric guitar and make make. No, 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 man! We can make we can make rest of the ER. <laughs> No, but seriously, we appreciate everybody joining us today. We're we're gonna hop out of here. Um, do you want to put a bow on this before we do, Clyde? Uh, yeah, uh, thanks everybody for uh, listening. Uh, if you like it, tell us. If you don't, you know, drop the old uh, elbow on us. Uh, we're going to share this around on Facebook. Uh, Bliss Army, uh, Becky Lynch Mob, Kofi Kingston Club, uh, I Heart Pro Wrestling, and WWF LJ Maniacs. And I maybe forgot some, but uh, it'll be out there. Share it around. Yeah, thanks for joining us, everybody. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. Give us something. If you like us, put us over. If you don't like us, let us know. We'll do a job for you on your show. That's the way we work, brother. And uh, we'll we'll catch you soon. Don't forget, we hit 1K subscribers. This man right here, Clyde, is going to take a guitar shot on video. So we got something we're working towards. Also, we're going to do a giveaway at some point. Lots of interesting stuff always happening here at HBD Sports, and we'll catch you guys soon.